Greetings. This is the first lecture based on chapter 29 of Miguel Roy Francoli's theory textbook, Harmony in Context. In this lecture, I'll be talking about extended tertian chords. When we say extended tertian chords, what we mean are chords that are built out of thirds. That's what tertian means. And they are extended beyond the seventh of the chord. Sometimes these are referred to as tall chords. So if we take a, a note, like a tonic note, normally we have triads and seventh chords built on a root. But we can also have a ninth. We can also have an eleventh above the root. And we can also have a thirteenth above the root. We wouldn't have a fifteenth above the root. That is, we could have a fifteenth above the root, but it would simply be a double octave above the root, so that wouldn't be all that interesting. So I'll be talking today about ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth chords. And you can use the handout, the chart that I gave you in class, to kind of go over some of the facts that I present, and maybe you'll want to add some things to that handout. I'll be showing the extended tertian chords mostly as dominant chords in the key of D major, and that's because we most frequently find 9th, 11th, and 13th chords as dominant chords. However, it is also possible to use extend, extended tertian sonorities as secondary dominant chords, and even as diatonic chords other than the dominant. A couple of words of warning for you. The extensions, that is the 9th, the 11th, and the 13th, always need to be fairly high up in the chord. They always need to be more than an octave above the root of the chord. So your 11th chord needs to actually be an 11th chord, not a 4th chord. And your 13th chord really needs to be a 13th chord, not a 6th chord. If these notes are more than two octaves above the bass, that's okay too. In fact, it's most common for the extensions to be in the soprano voice. Whatever the highest extension of the tall chord is, that note is likely to be in the melody and in the soprano. A second note, we are only going to encounter these chords in root position. I suppose maybe we might see a ninth chord somewhere in inversion, but that's very rare. Basically, we're going to encounter these chords in root position only, so you don't need to worry at all about what the figure base would be for a second inversion 11th chord. We're just not, not going to do that at all. First chord I want to show you is probably the most common extended tertian chord. It's the 5-9 chord, and the 5-9 chord also has a seventh in it, so Roy Francoli is always going to call it a 5-9-7. We'll also see the mode mixture version of this chord, which is the flat 9-7. Okay, so the 5-9-7 takes a, an incomplete seventh chord with a root, a third, and a seventh and it adds to the top of that a ninth. And the note that is omitted in the ninth chord is pretty much always the fifth of the chord. You need the third, because if it's a dominant function chord, the third is the leading tone. And you need the seventh, because the seventh is consonant with the ninth, and it's part of what gives the chord its character. When this chord resolves to a one chord, both the ninth and the seventh are going to resolve down. The leading tone typically will resolve up, and we'll have a resolution like that. Let me also point out that the ninth can resolve before the rest of the chord. So we could have a 9-8, almost as if it was a 9-8 suspension. And so we'd have that resolution of the ninth down a step before the rest of the chord resolved. But whether the ninth resolves before the rest of the chord or whether it resolves with the rest of the chord, it's important for the ninth to resolve down by step. 
what I had written on the board before was this. And here it is with the ninth resolving early. Making the nine a flatted note means using the note lay as the ninth. And that increases the tendency of the ninth to resolve down. So once you stick a lay in the chord instead of a la, which gives us the interval of a minor ninth above the bass, now that chord needs to resolve down not only because it's a ninth, but also because it has the note lay in it, which very strongly wants to resolve to sol. So that's a common ninth chord to find in a major key, and it's the only 5-9 chord that we would find in a minor key. We would never in minor put in a la when the lay is that much stronger. Mr. Beethoven loves this chord. Let me show you the 11th chords next. Okay, an 11th above sol is actually do because an 11th is a fourth plus an octave. When we put a do in the chord, if we also put a t in the chord, that's going to clash. So it's better to think of this note as replacing t. So you should always omit the third and you should always include the seventh. So you can either include the fifth so that you have a root, a fifth, a seventh, and an eleventh in that chord, or you can make it an eleven nine seven, including the seventh and the ninth. So that's with a root, a ninth, a seventh, and an eleventh. Either one of these possibilities are good. Just so that you can see it, I'll write in the number five here. Usually Mr. Roy Frankoli doesn't put that in. But basically the 11th chord is either gonna be an 1175 or an 1197. Notice that when it's an 1197, what you actually have is a four chord above scale degree five. And that's very common in a lot of pop music. It's very common in blues and blues derived music to have that five. That five that sort of sounds like it's got the notes of four, fa la do above it. When an 11th chord resolves, the 11th resolves by common tone, 7th resolves down, like so, 11th resolves by common tone, 9th resolves down, 7th resolves down, so that means that we go either to an incomplete one, if we had the 5th in the chord because we don't want to have parallel 5ths, or we can go to a 1 chord, which is complete, if you have the 11, 9, 7. Eleventh chords, as I've said before, don't have to be dominant chords. They can be built on other scale degrees. The 211 is particularly common. And when you have a 211, it includes scale degree 5 in it, so that when it resolves to the 5 chord, that, is, that note is kept as a common tone. Okay, and let's finally look at the 5 13th chord. And again, we can also have a mode mixture version of this, which is the five with the lowered 13th, so that if we're in a major key, we would be putting May into the chord instead of Mi. Normally, the notes that we have in a 13th chord are the root, the third, the seventh, and the 13th. And the flat 13th chord would be A, C, G, and not F flat, but F natural. So it has 
scale degree may. Most typically when, and this is often, Lloyd Frankel is gonna call this a 13-7 chord. He doesn't put the three in because we don't normally show a three in figured bass. When the 513th chord resolves, it normally resolves by leap. So I'll show that here. Okay, the seventh goes down. The leading tone could either go up or it could go down one of those two like that. When we have a major 13th, it can either resolve by common tone or it can resolve by leap. But the leap is always the most common. Remember how when we had a five chord with a substituted sixth, the chord that looked like a three six chord, but that we called a five chord because it was acting like a dominant. In that case, the substituted sixth resolved by leap. And what that chord really was, was a 13th chord. We didn't call it that back in chapter 14, but that's, uh, that's essentially what we were showing you. Okay, so let me play one, four, five, one, and then I'll play these two chord progressions for you. Okay, here's your five thirteenth chord, resolving by leap. Slightly less common would be the same chord, resolving by common tone. If it's a minor 13th in a major key, it always needs to resolve by leap. If it doesn't resolve by leap, if it goes up by half step like this, then technically what we're hearing is not an F natural, it's an E sharp. And what you have is a five augmented triad. Let me ask you to compare those two to each other. Okay, this is a five augmented triad with a seventh. The raised fifth resolves up, seventh resolves down. But if you think of that note as a minor 13th, it needs to resolve by leap. Spelling matters. That's your quick introduction to extended tertian chords. You can look at the handout that you have and see in a nice table form the facts about ninth chords and 11th chords and 13th chords. And we'll be seeing examples of these in literature and we'll also be doing just a little bit of part writing with them. Thanks.